Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining today's the bubble tea session. I need to apologize first as I have changed the topic from how to become what makes a good lawyer from a senior partner's perspective to the topic today, which is uh, regarding the performance bonds bank guarantee. For the earlier topic, I will have to rearrange another session when time comes for that sharing. So for today's purpose, I'll be talking about this uh, bank guarantee performance bonds issue. Okay, hope everyone can learn something on this and I will try to share it in a very light manner and simple manner so that everyone uh, have some idea about it. Okay. So what, what will be, what is a bank guarantee or performance bond? A performance bond is commonly used as a means of insuring the employer against the risk of contractor failing to fulfill any contractual obligation pursuant to a construction contract. And even if it's not a construction contract, in any other contract, if one party insists to impose such a condition that the other party need to fulfill a performance bond, that arrangement can be done for such contract. And the performance bonds normally is being the value for the performance bonds normally will be fixed at 10% of the contract value. For example, if the contract value for the construction total is 3 million, or sorry, 30 million, then the performance bonds value will be 10% of the 30 million. And the compensation normally granted for these performance bonds is to and enable the employer to overcome any difficulties that have been caused by the non-performance of the contractor, such as finding a new third-party contractor to carry out any rectification work for the remaining contract. And normally the performance bonds, typically, typically it will be in the form of a bank guarantee that we'll be, we'll be discussing later on. So normally can a bank refuse to release a bank guarantee if being called upon by the employer? The general answer is no, as normally the bank guarantee is an unconditional and is on, uh, is on demand performance bond. And the bank has no obligation to refuse to honor the bank guarantee. As you can see here, the standard clause in the bank guarantee will normally put you see at the bottom there, notwithstanding any contestation or protest by the contractor or by the guarantor or by any other third party, and provided always that the total of the all partial demand so made shall not exceed the guaranteed sum herein. This indirectly means that the bank actually have no say. They have to release the bank guarantee upon being called by the employer. So under what circumstances the bank can refuse to release the bank guarantee? Or I should rephrase, it's not the bank refuse, but under what circumstances the bank can withhold from releasing the bank guarantee? There are certain exceptions herein, whereby if there is a court intervention by way of injunction, restraining the bank from making payment out on a performance bond. This provided that the party calling on the bank guarantee was guilty of any fraud or unconscionable conduct, which reshades the validity of the demand. Normally, the contractor will apply to the court by naming the bank and also the employer as the co-defendant. So what are the procedures? In for the contractor when he approached the lawyer to ask them to file an injunction to the court to stop the performance bonds being called. So the party intending to resist on the performance bonds 
may have applied to the court to file an injunction to restrain the bank from releasing the money and also at the same time restraining the employer from receiving the bank guarantee amount. And the procedure that lawyers will apply in this kind of situation is to immediately file an injunction application by way of originating, originating summon supported by an affidavit and also at the same time file a notice of application also supported by an affidavit in support and together with a certificate of urgency. Why the lawyer need to file a certificate of urgency in this kind of situation? Normally the court will take some time in processing the application. Without the certificate of urgency, the court will not fix an early hearing date and that will defeat the purpose because the bank will normally have certain due date to comply with the performance bonds, i.e. they have to release the money within probably seven days or 14 days. So without an early date being fixed, the bank has no choice but to release the money. So what the lawyer will normally do after filing the certificate urgency, they will meet up with the court registrar to fix an early date to see the judge and to obtain a so-called ex parte order based on the notice of application filed. This ex parte order not supposed to be served upon the bank or the employer due to the sole reason that if being served, the employer will definitely resist at that juncture. And that will defeat the purpose of obtaining an interlocutory temporary order. So once the ex parte order was being granted, normally it's for will valid for 21 days. So this within the 21 days, the judge had to fix an inter parte hearing whereby all other parties are being allowed to participate in the application. So what will happen if the if between the ex parte order and the inter parte hearing date is longer than 21 days? So normally the lawyers will request the court to grant a so-called ad interim order, i.e. to extend the ex parte order until the disposal of the inter parte hearing. As you can see here, the application for injunction is a very uh, so-called strict application whereby certain procedural requirements need to be strictly complied to, as you can see hereafter. Okay. Normally the sections or the provision of law that be re being relied on in applying an injunction order is based on section 11 of the Arbitration Act, section 41 and 50 of the Specific Relief Act, and also under the procedural requirement of order 29, rule one, and Order 92, Rule 4 of the Rules of Court, 2012. What is Section 11A or Arbitration Act? As you can see here, Section 11A provides that a party before or during the arbitral proceeding apply to High Court for any interim measure. And the High Court may make the following orders for the party to maintain or restore the status quo pending the determination of the dispute. And the determination of the dispute normally herein is being, state, is being resolved by way of arbitration proceeding. Section, relief, Section 41 of the relief, Specific Relief Act 1950 provides that any person entitled to any legal character or to any right to any property may institute a suit against any person denying or interested to deny his title to the character or right, and the court may in its discretion make therein a declaration that he is so entitled, and the plaintiff need not in that suit ask for any further relief, provided that no court shall make any such declaration where the plaintiff being able to seek further relief than a mere declaration or title or miss to do so. Section 50 of the Specific Relief Act also provide that a preventive relief is granted at the discretion of the court 
by injunction, temporary or perpetual. Under the procedural requirement of the rules of court, an application for the grant injunction, whether or not to claim for the injunction was included in that origin process, you can, we can refer to order 29 of the rule one, whereby such application need to be by way of supporting affidavit and can be by way of ex parte application if in the event of any urgency. As you can see in the section in the in the order whereby the requirement of certain factors or specific requirement need to be specifically pleaded in the affidavit, such as the facts given giving rise to the claim and the facts giving rise to the application for the injunction, the facts rely on to justify the ex parte application including details of any notice given to the other party. If no notice have not been given, the reason for why not being given. Any answer by the other party to the claim or application, any facts that which may lead the court not to grant the application ex parte or at all, or whether any similar application has been made to another judge before, and also to specifically plead the precise relief sought in the SIG application. Okay, thanks. Order 29 also specified that the court has inherent jurisdiction to grant any relief to prevent any injustice or to prevent an abuse of the process of the court. So these are normally the few provision or the statutory provision that lawyers will rely on when applying for a court injunction application. So when deal with the application, what are the factors or criteria to be considered by the learned judge? The first, normally the lawyers will be raising the argument of defective demand, whereby it mainly, it will depend on the wording of the performance bond. Some performance bonds are being mentioned as unconditional, whereby a mere written demand is sufficient. However, certain performance bond has specifically provided that the demand must assert a failure of the contract. Or the performance bond may also specify that the parties calling for the performance bonds must provide proof of the breach. So it must depend on what kind of performance bonds is being called. But generally, a performance bonds normally is unconditional. So if the defective demand is being, is, if the de demand is actually defective, then the lawyer can use this reason to ask the court to grant an injunction since the precondition of the demand has not been met. The second factor the court may consider is whether, this, whether, whether is there any fraud being alleged or being established in the circumstances of the calling of the performance bond. The third common ground which all lawyers will normally use is on this ground of unconscionability, whereby the court has so far adopted a test called seriously arguable and realistic inference test, whereby the plaintiff, i.e. the contractor, must adduce sufficient evidence of unconscionable conduct on the part of the defendant, i.e. the employer, in making the call on the bank guarantee. The court in these circumstances will look into the party's conduct, the terms of the underlying contract and supplementary agreement, the respective performance of the obligation of both parties, and whether a breach of any of the agreement had occurred. To make you guys clearer on what the court normally wanted to find from the facts of the case, you can refer to these few cases, whereby in Dangun Jaya case, the court has stated down there the test as not whether the allegation 
by the contractor are proven or otherwise, but whether sufficient evidence have been placed before the court so as to enable the court to be satisfied, not necessarily beyond reasonable doubt, that a case of a unconscionability has been established to an extent that is sufficient for the court to be minded to order the injunction sought. In the other case of target resources, the court has a rule down that the allegation must not be a mere bare assertion. The burden is on the contractor to prove that the employer has acted in an unconscionable manner. In the Maxwell Essen case, the court has stated that the contractor or the plaintiff must demonstrate a strong prima facie case that the event leading to the call and conduct of the employer are of such degree as to prick the conscience of a reasonable and sensible man. There's a recent case which is quite interesting whereby the, the contractor has uh, invoked the movement control order to invite the court to, to make a decision whether such a calling by the employer is tantamount to an unconscionable manner. In this case, the employer, the contractor has adduced evidence to show that uh, he's unable to fulfill the contract contractual terms due to some restriction. However, based on the findings, the court find that, found out that actually the restriction was actually before the happening of the pandemic. So the court has made a decision that a party cannot make use of the COVID Act bill or the preventive measures, uh, the, the Act, to say that they are unable to perform the contract due to such unforeseen circumstances. And the calling of the bond by the employer is actually not unconscionable because the contractor failed to really prove that they are unable to perform the contract due to the movement control order. The four factors that the court will normally consider is based on balance on convenience. Normally the injunction will be granted if the court found out that based on the balance of convenience is more favor the plaintiff, i.e. the contractor, and the damages would not be adequate remedy to the plaintiff. And the fifth condition that the court will consider before granting an application of injunction is the plaintiff's ability to meet the undertaking in damages should the suit fail. Because normally, the, under, the, under any injunction application, the plaintiff itself must provide an undertaking of damages so that eventually, if, the, if his suit fails, he has to pay the damages to the defendant. So this is the simple presentation that I would like to share with you all as I believe the CC team may have, been, may have faced certain circumstances whereby the contract itself contained any performance bond issue and the client may be asking how to stop the performance bond being exercised. With that, I will end the session. And if any question, please feel free to ask here. Lim Yuwa, any, any question, Lim Yuwa? No, Mr. Tuno, <laughs> thank you. <laughs>
You can listen or not one. Adrian Ko. Adrian Ko, I'm just too young. No question from my end. Ah, no question. Ah. No question. Kasun. Oh, maybe just one small point on the limit of ten percent. Yeah, normally I think the 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 common in that the common practice by the industry is they fix it at ten percent. So that's the common practice, ah. Uh, yeah. Not by law. Not by law. Ah. Uh, oh, but ten okay. percent, I think I believe is quite reasonable. Hmm. Okay. Thanks. Hilary. Hilary Lim. Mr. Tu. Hilary, Mr. Aizah. Mr. Tu. Yeah. Mr. Tu, have you done any injunction for this bank guarantee or not? Yeah, we just we just have just uh, the Monday just finished filing a injunction application and it was heard yesterday, and the court wow. granted the ex parte. Normally, so it will be between how long you can get the injunction, Mister Do. The in the the ex parte application it can be heard very soon within one week. So if the court mindful in get in granting you the ex parte order, then you will get it within the seven days, because this will meet your timeline. Because the bank normally will will have to release the money, so without the ex parte order, the bank have no choice. Oh, normally normally it's within seven days. It's not statutory yes. requirement, but just to, but just a how to say it. That's why the by way of administrative, the lawyer need to get the court to give you an early date as soon as possible. So normally we'll get it within seven days on. So it depends on the judge whether they will grant you the ex parte order or not. If the court don't want to grant you, they will ask you to convert it into an inter parte, whereby you will be face a difficult situation. You don't have a court order to stop the bank. So normally you have to convince the judge to grant you the ex parte order, based on the circumstances, the urgency. Okay. If let's say the if the court uh they are not actually agreed to grant you the ex parte, then the bank will actually. They will proceed to release the money, right? Yes, because they have no you you have no order to serve to them. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's why it's very it's very so called headache or very stress for the lawyers when they can't get the ex parte order out. But normally, how the contractor know that actually the employer they will claim their uh the the the, the bank guarantee from the bank? Yeah, good question. I think normally the bank will will inform. The so-called contractor saying that the employer has called upon the the bank guarantee because because in my tenancies uh matter the the bank actually once they receive the uh a request from the what we call uh, the, the the landlord they actually can release the money without informing anyone they will yes. just perform yes. so that's the reason why I ask why the actually contractor will know that actually the employer sent in a claim. <laughs> Because I think in not in 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 practice, even a normal guarantee agreement, mm. normally the 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 so called guarantor, when when they want to to honor the 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 guarantee, they will inform the so called donor, so called donor. That means the the contractor here. Mm. That's why they are being being informed so quickly. They will have to file the application, and sometimes normally the contractor will know also because the. The so-called employer will issue a termination letter to them, and saying that they will call upon the demand. So by the time they will know already, they will they will get it prepared and also to check with the bank whether they receive such notification or not. But 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 the bank committee normally it will claim sometimes it's just for the damages or the loss they actually uh incurred, but not necessary to terminate, right? No, the the term the termination is done by the employer. And then, after the employer terminate the contract, the employer will quickly call up the performance bond to claim the maximum sum in the performance bond, because normally their termination will result into a very high damages. 
which is more than the performance bond one. So normally they will call upon the full sum. Mm. Would there be any changes if let's say, uh, is there any cases before where the contractor actually, uh, how to say, because the employer, let's say employer already claimed the sum, uh, the performance bond. Then yep. if let's say they found out something, then they challenge the, uh, the claim, will the bank or the employer actually be liable for any loss or damages? Is there any case before? I think the bank definitely, they are, they are being released from any liability. It's just the employer, they will yes. cover. Yes, hmm. the employer there, because the they, 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 they will be an arbitration proceeding later on to, to, to resolve the dispute because the, the contractor also will have a suit against the employer. And the employee also have a suit against the, the, the contractor. It will be resolved in the arbitration proceeding. So if eventually the arbitration proceeding with the result that the amount claim is, is uh, less than the performance bond, then the contractor can claim back against the employer. And normally they will claim back together with the interest or free of interest. Or with the interest, whatever. Lah. Based on the arbitration proceeding, there will be a, a arbitration order. Mah. Mm. Okay. Okay. Uh, but but be, prior to that, the, the bank will have to release the money to the to the employer because that's under the bank guarantee. We have no choice. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Hey, why 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 Mister Why you call my member? Ah? <laughs> My team member, everyone you call. I can see only you, you guys here, ma. Huh? No, hi, Tio Xiang Li. Yes, Mr. Tu. Yeah, no question indeed. from my side. Uh, surprisingly. Yeah, I always have a lot of questions. Just today, <laughs> I don't have questions. Okay. Tio Chiu Li also here, Mr. Tu. Yeah, hi, Tio Chiu Li. Yeah, I thought Tio Chiu Li is here. I thought Tio Chiu Li is here. Tio Chiu Li? That's why I keep quiet. Yi, <laughs> Yo! <laughs> it's only canal. Shei has no questions. I see the chat box. PC has no microphone. Uh, Mr. Tu, don't have question. I have you to call him. <laughs> he <let me> really leave. <laughs> I call Hilary. She no response. No response. Hi, Mr. Tu. Any question, Hilary? No, no from my side. No question. Because just now I was away when you called me. That's why I didn't respond. Oh, because Mayor always say that you have a lot of questions, then. No, uh. okay. <laughs> since then I have a lot of questions. Okay. Any, any, no. any question, Aini? No question, Mr. Tu. You understand mm. the thing, huh? Yeah. Still digesting. Okay. Alicia? No question, Mr. Tu. Okay. Okay, thanks everyone. Hopefully the, the this session give you some insight on what is the performance bond. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Normally, normally Poe will ask question one. Where's Poe today? Eh, hey, Poe is not here. I didn't, I didn't see Poe's name. Oh. Okay. Okay. Okay, okay thanks everyone. Thank Enjoy you, Mr. Tu. Enjoy Thank your tea. You. Enjoy Thank your you. tea. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, Mr. Tu. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Enjoy your quality.